Sierra Leone is a country on the southwest coast of West Africa. The country was faced by 11 years civil war, which had a devastating effect on the lives and economic standard of the people. In 2014, the country faced one of the tragic diseases, which is the Ebola virus, which claimed the lives of over 7,000 people and rendered many widowed, some orphans, and some economically handicapped. In recent times, on the 14th of August 2017, the country faced another natural disaster as lives and properties we are claimed by a devastating mudslide. These occurrences have had harsh effects on the livelihoods of the people and today the country is being rated as one of the poorest countries in the world. Yet our people are strong and resilient and moving forward. Young university graduates continue to suffer the pinch of unemployment as there are no job opportunities. It is very difficult and frustrating for graduates in Sierra because having four years of academic struggle, they are expected to get a job after that. But that's not the case here in Sierra Leone. Because of uh, joblessness, they have been deprived. To, uh, to help the community or even to help the government. They are pleading to the government you know, and development partners to see how best they can tap in to this youth or this graduates and help them so that they too they can help or return back to their communities. The poverty challenges in Sierra Leone does not only hit young people but also the aged and war amputated victims who accounts for the most vulnerable categories of people here in Sierra Leone. Kadiatu Mansare is a polio who depends on street begging for the daily sustenance of her family. She expresses the difficulty and challenges she is facing to provide for her welfare and that of her three children. I said, I don't pass for being on the streets, but we know they are not going to help me. I want to leave the streets, but there is no alternative work I can do to care for my children. But I can't rest thinking of how difficult it is for my three children to starve. I am a single mother who is left to take care of the responsibilities of my three children. I get three picking there. I am a skilled person in tailoring, and if I can have startup capital, I will gladly engage in my tailoring while providing my children Situations of street begging does not only involve aged women but also aged men. It appears in Sierra Leone that street begging has been one of the greatest means of survival for aged people. Similarly, Usman Kago is a father of seven children who trek seven miles away from home to Makeni City on a daily basis to engage in street begging to provide for the welfare of his children and wife. The hardship in a country like Sierra Leone is alarming and there is urgent need for humanitarians and philanthropists in the international community to intervene. This is also affecting victims who were amputated as a result of the 10 years rebel war in Sierra Leone. Yenor Kanu is a double amputee and one of the victims that suffered the harsh impacts of the rebel war. We are staying in this camp with no food. We do not have any money to afford food for ourselves and our families. Since the emergency of the coronavirus, there is no help even with street begging. People hardly help you out with something to provide food for the family. We want our children to go to school and gain formal education, but we cannot afford the finances to support and empower them. Pakamara and Saidu Kamara explained their stories as to how they became amputees. They come now. And they try to pull out me and his family. Go to watch Guinea. On the way, 
ambush. During the rebel war, I was staying in Kono, in the eastern region of Sierra Leone. The rebels attacked our town, and I was trying to escape with my family when rebels shot me at my left hand, and I was rushed to another community where we are taken by the UN and flee to Guinea, where my hand was caught as a result of the terrible injury. I was at Paima, and on the 6th January 1991, I was shot on the foot. I took seven days in the bush with no one to care for me. I had to struggle by crawling on the ground to find the highway. Luckily, I was picked up by some people who went with me to my Maborka. There was an Italian priest by the name of Father Olivani. He was my savior. So, the people are not be angry at that. Because the Dorothy and the bone normal. He cared for me and secured for my treatment. Tip the radio and the make top light and me na tailor in back. I get the certificate. Following these touching stories and getting first hand experience about the deplorable and vulnerable conditions of these sets of people, Mr. Stango and Augustine Sensi Bangura discussed the need to create multiple streams of income generation through social impact drives in order to address the issues of unemployment by creating job opportunities for the youth and render charitable support to the aged and war victims who were amputated during the rebel war. People with the government made a sorry for made a help we now picking the all they go to school. Right now we remember about that. How picking they go to school, kids know they again, do not get money again. For law make law picking them go to school because free education in, in, in need boku money back. Amongst the businesses that require support are an executive barber shop, agri business, and many more. We are concerned about the vulnerable conditions of these people and hope you can render a helping hand to transform their lives and sow in them seeds of hope and joy.